Welcome to 3.3 part 2 where we talk about Cauchy's bound. Cauchy uh, was a French mathematician and engineer that was born in the late 1700s and died in the mid 1800s and if you go on in mathematics, engineering, uh, you know higher levels of calc, I guess that's mathematics, you will hear his name again definitely um, but it is pronounced Cauchy. Uh, Cauchy's bound. A bound is just like an interval. We can say that we have like an upper bound and a lower bound on some things. You'll definitely be hearing the, that in the future mathematically as well. Um, but this bound tells us the intervals on which all our real roots, aka zeros, of a polynomial lie. So again, the real roots are the actual x-intercepts of a polynomial. And his like theorem here just gives us the bound. So it gives us a negative to a positive x value. And in between those two x values are where we can find all of our real zeros, aka those x-intercepts. This helps us with kind of where we need to focus ourselves on the graph of a polynomial, since we don't want to be way off when looking at a graph. Uh, so this gives us a nice bound to see where all those real zeros lie. All right, here it is in all its glory. It looks scarier than it actually is, I promise. But this is the actual Cauchy's bound. If you need to go ahead and pause to write this down, go ahead. Um, if not, that's fine. I think the examples will definitely help us more than this probably. But let's take a look at what this means. Here's our polynomial and it has degree n. We can clearly see that n is the largest exponent here of this polynomial written out. It's not in factored form, it's written all out uh, in general form. And a sub n, a sub n minus one, those are just the um, coefficients of each one of our terms. And then a sub zero is just the constant. Uh, if we take a look here, we want to let m be the largest of all these numbers. There's a dot, dot, dot in here because we don't know how big n is. So this is saying that m is the largest of all these numbers. What are these numbers? Well, for starters, there's absolute values around all these. So they're all positive. And the denominator of each one of these numbers is the leading coefficient. The numerator of all these numbers that makes them different are all the other coefficients. So a sub zero is the constant. A sub one is this coefficient, the other coefficient. You know, So depending on how many terms you have, that's how many possible numbers you have. All right, once you determine, determine m, m's the largest of all of these fractions that you find, then we can determine the bound. What we do is we add one to that m value and that's our upper bound. And then we put a negative in front of that value and that's our lower bound. So let's say m was seven, the upper bound would be eight and the lower bound would be negative eight. In this first example, we have a quartic polynomial. It has five terms. We do wanna determine an interval which contains all the real zeros of f. All right, so we, we need to use Cauchy's bound here, this theorem. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that fraction thing that we saw from our theorem, and we want to pick the largest number, and that'll be our m. So we want to pick the largest number out of, there's going to end up being f uh, four fractions. Um, one with a four in the numerator, uh, well, the absolute value of four, which is four. one with a the absolute value of negative one that's this next coefficient here the next coefficient's negative six so the absolute value of negative six and the last one is negative three now what goes in the denominator of all of these numbers the same thing the absolute value of the lead coefficient this is a sub n right here so the absolute value of two the absolute value of two and for all of them. Then I'll put commas in between these to show that these are four different numbers. All right, so what is the absolute value of four? It's four. What's the absolute value of two? It's two. This is four over two. This number equals two. Yes, that is a vertical equals sign. All right, let's determine the next one. The absolute value of negative one is one divided by two. This number is one half. In the next one, the absolute value of negative six is six, so that's six over two, which is three. 
And then the next one, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, so this is 3 halves, or 1.5. So our largest of these four is 3. So that means that m is 3. And then the interval, Cauchy's bound, that interval, remember, is found by doing negative the quantity m plus 1, that's the lower bound, and the upper bound is m plus 1. So what is m plus 1? m is 3, so m plus 1 would be 4. So that's a negative 4 to a positive 4. So that means all of our real zeros, any of the x-intercepts of this polynomial, are on the x, have to hit the x-axis from negative 4 to 4. That means they could hit at negative 4 or at 4 um, if they happen to because of these closed brackets here. It's including those endpoints as possibilities. Let's take a look on Desmos and see if that's the case. Okay, so I've graphed it on Desmos and we can see that definitely all of our x-intercepts occur in between when x is negative 4 and when x is 4. In fact, they happen much closer to the origin instead. I do want to point out too, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, since this is a quartic function, the degree is 4, that means that we have four total roots, um, but they're all real actually. How is this the case? Check out this root here. It looks like it's at negative 1. This actually has a multiplicity of 3. Remember this little squiggle, the multiplicity of 3? That means that this root, negative 1, this real root, occurs three times. This root over here, which looks like it's maybe at like 1.2 or something like that, this root occurs only one time. So this root, real root, here occurs three times, because multiplicity is how many times a root occurs. It occurs three times because its multiplicity is 3, and this root occurs one time. So this actually does have four real roots. This one counts three times. I don't know why it moved a little bit, but this one counts three times, so it counts for three of those four. This other real one accounts for only one time. And we use Cauchy's bound to correctly determine that Yes, all of our real roots definitely lie between the x values of negative 4 to positive 4. Here's our second and final example. We want to use Cauchy's bound to determine an interval in which all of our real zeros of f lie. f in this case again is quartic, but now it's a quartic trinomial, so it has fewer terms. So again, Cauchy's um, bounds, I guess, I'm not sure if it's actually a theorem, but we want to pick the largest of these numbers. So we want to take, well we're actually only going to have two fractions here to pick from, and what goes in the numerator of those fractions are we just don't use the lead coefficient but all the other coefficients and their absolute value. So the absolute value in this case of 1, that lead, that coefficient, that's not the lead. It's always weird to write the absolute value of 1. It looks like three lines. Okay, and then we have the absolute value of negative 12. Then in our denominator is always the same thing. It's a sub n, where because a sub n is the lead coefficient, and it's the absolute value of that lead coefficient. So it's the absolute value of 1. Again, weird looking things here. So I want to put this one ends up equaling 1, and this fraction ends up equaling 12. So 12 is clearly our winner. So that means Thus, right, m is 12, and Cauchy's bound says that all of the real zeros of a polynomial lie in the interval from negative the quantity m plus 1 as the lower bound to positive the quantity m plus 1 as the upper bound. So in our case, if we do m plus 1, we'll get 13. So all of our real zeros lie between negative 13 and positive 13 on the x-axis. I graphed this one on Desmos as well, and it is a quartic. It's very a very skinny polynomial. Um, if we take a look on here, whoops, we can clearly see that 
all of our real roots, our x-intercepts, definitely occur between negative 13 and positive 13 on the x-axis. They occur, you know, again, much closer to the origin than that. This is just giving a bound where they have to be. So if we look, we definitely see that we have two real roots on this polynomial and they each have a multiplicity of one because they directly just slash through the x-axis there's no squiggle or anything so they have a multiplicity of one so that means this quartic polynomial um, has two real roots well according to the fundamental theorem of algebra because it's degree four it needs to have it has four total roots so that means that since two of them are real they each occur only once one root here one root here that means there are two imaginary roots on this polynomial as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed our video about Cauchy's bound and throwing in a little bit of the fundamental theorem of algebra as well.